our elder board, bringing a unique combination of both a thorough knowledge of the difficult field and a passionate love for people with a desire to help. I consider Joe not only to be a great leader here at our church, but also a personal friend who has blessed me and this church and many of you. Would you please join me in giving a great, big, warm Mount Bethel welcome to our brother, Joe Gannon. That was too big of a build-up to follow. But thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to preach today. And uh, thank you for this church. <clears throat> Love this church. I believe God brought me to this church, wants me to stay in this church, and hopefully I'll be buried out of this church. So thank you, Father. I would ask that you would just uh, lift me up in prayer right now so that the words I speak be his words, that the hearts I touch will be touched by him, that he will make of me an instrument of his peace today, and that I will be a blessing to someone in this room today. What a privilege. I was so pleased that when Pastor asked me to, uh, to do this, last week we were supposed to do it, but God had a different plan. It's out there. It's white. I guess he was trying to tell me I covered you with snow with my, from my blood. I covered you with snow, and you made me. White as snow. Thank you, Father. Nothing I did. Nothing I have to do. He saved me for eternity. In 1985, I was broken, headed for death, cried out, to God and I asked him to help me in Jesus name and I didn't really understand what I was saying but he did and he took away the urge to drink and I haven't had an urge to drink in almost 31 years thank you for it. And then he brought me along, or my wife brought me to church, <laughs> and I listened. And until I was ready, I didn't hear. And then finally, he used the Holy Spirit when a good friend of mine, a pastor in another church, said, Jesus is who he says he is, or he's a lunatic. And the Holy Spirit popped me in the head and said, did you listen to that stupid? <laughs> and I got the message. Praise God. And in reading and studying to talk about this chapter today, so many things come out of this chapter. So many things. And we'll try to explore some of them. We won't get to all of them. But I ask that the Holy Spirit take over and lead me in whatever way he wants to lead me. Let these words be his words. We're in chapter 13. Pastor has talked about the last 12 chapters of Jesus' public ministry. Went out, did all these miracles, and people still didn't come. But the people that he had chose, they were still with him. So now was his time because he knew that his time was close, that he was going to go to a cross and be crucified. And he went to that cross 
willingly. It's an amazing thing. Nobody crucified him but the Father. And he went willingly because he wanted to serve the Father. The apostles that he had chosen truly didn't comprehend and what he was doing, what he was saying. But they called the Master. And he said to them, you say correctly, you're right. I am the master. You worship me. It's okay. I'm supposed to be worshipped. And this is very interesting, what I found. He gets up from the supper table, takes a basin of water, and he begins to wash the feet of the disciples. And he knew that one of those disciples was going to betray him. This is an amazing thing that popped out of me. He washed Judas's feet. The devil had put into Judas the idea of betraying the Christ. And Judas was romancing it. Sometimes we get evil thoughts. And it's not the thought that's the problem. It's the romancing of the thought that would lead us to commit it. Being an old drunk... People tell me I get urges to drink. I've never experienced that. I guess the good Lord knew if I got an urge, I'd probably use. So he took that away from me, like I said. But it's not the thought that comes into my brain about drinking. It's the romancing of the drink. And then comes the act. So he washed Judas' feet. I don't know what was going on in the mind of Judas. He had seen miracles, so many of them that were depicted in the first 12 chapters. He was there with them. He was around Christ, but he had never accepted Christ into his heart. The other 11 had. He gave Judas the privilege. And what jumps out at me is that he gives every one of us the privilege of joining with him. Yet many don't. Many don't hear. Many think they can find an easier, softer way to borrow from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. But they could not. For years I tried an easier, softer way, and I could not. Today, I like to take my will back to find that easier, softer way. And the result is nil until I get back to the Lord. The washing of the feet is very symbolic. We need to have our feet washed every day. Every day. And what it means to me and what I got out of it was that I need to go to the Lord first thing in the morning, as soon as my eyes open up, and say, Father, please. That the words I speak be yours. 
with the hearts I touch, be touched by you. Let me be an instrument of your love and your peace and make me a blessing to someone today. It's done. I ain't got to do nothing but just go through the motions. That's how much he loves me. That's how much he loves you. And then at the end of that day, I take that moral inventory of myself. And when I'm wrong, I promptly admit it. Because I know I loused up something today. Because I am not perfect. There was only one perfect man. And he went to a cross. And he died for you and me. You may not have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's between you and the Savior. I can only share with you that when I finally accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I did know a new freedom and a new happiness that the book of Alcoholics Anonymous talks about. I knew a new freedom and a new happiness for eternity because I was his. And when he goes to wash Peter's feet, Peter had a big mouth, didn't he? I can relate to that because I got a big mouth. And Peter was stubborn. Boy, I can relate to that. I'm stubborn. And you might think that when Peter said, not me, you can't wash my feet, that he was being humble. But he wasn't. It was just the opposite. He was being prideful. I want to do for you, Lord. You shouldn't do for me. And he says something to Peter. And this is for us to remember, because we all fall short, don't we? That once we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, and once we repent from our sins, we're His. And we can't lose that salvation. But I have to go every day to get reinforced to get my feet washed because of my humanness being born into Adam. I have a sin nature. And when I accepted Jesus into my heart, I was reborn. But the sin nature is still there, and Satan is very aware of it. And he will use every tool in the book, the master liar, the master manipulator, to put thoughts in my head. He never told Eve to eat the apple. He put the thought in her brain. And she began to romance it, just as Judas began to romance the portrayal of the Christ. There's so much in this chapter. There's so much in the 13th book of John. John, being the youngest, I've read that he was the youngest of all the apostles. Might have been a teenager or 18 or whatever. I don't know. Got to ask the man who knows down there. You have a lot of questions for you, Pastor. Uh, but John loved him. John loved him probably with a more naive love, a pure love. A childlike love. And wasn't it Jesus who said to us, he said to Nicodemus, 
You must become like a child and be born again. And Nicodemus said, what do you mean born again? Born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. Jesus didn't pick me because I was so great. Jesus picked me because I was a sinner. And I know today that Jesus had some plans for me. And I know that if I yield on a daily basis to be that instrument of his peace, he will use me. What a gift that is. Not because he needs Joe Gannon. The bride and I were talking the other day about Mary, the mother of Christ. He gave her a choice. And she chose to bear the Son of God. I have a choice today. I have a choice to hopefully do what the Lord wants me to do. And he's not going to reap one benefit from it. I am. As an old saying, margin covers the bread, butter is better. I like butter. I hope you do too. <laughs> it's another message when Peter says not to wash his feet. Jesus said, if I don't, if you do not allow me to wash your feet, you cannot be in communion with me. Didn't say you're going to lose your salvation. He was already saved. He said, you won't be able to communicate with me in that wonderful blessing that I have for you. He said, you don't understand it now, but you will. And he did. He refused Jesus three times. He said, I don't even know the guy. You must have me confused with somebody else. But because he was saved... And because he realized what he had done, he asked for forgiveness. There's a difference between him and Judas. Judas realized what he had done, but instead of falling on his knees and asking the Lord to forgive him, he went and he hung himself. Peter didn't do that. Before the rooster crowed, he had denied the Christ three times. And he remembered what Jesus has told, had told him. You will deny me three times. Before the cock crows. Wow. So there's so much in this scripture, in this part of <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 13, that keeps throwing stuff at me and boggling my mind. He humbles himself. The Lord humbles himself to show how much he loved his own. Tremendous blessing. to be loved by the Son of Glory. Came from the Father, humbles himself, humiliates himself to become a man. 
and then allows himself in a human body to feel all the pain, the spiritual pain, the mental pain, the physical pain. So when you have pain, he knows. When you lose something special, he knows. When you lose someone special, he knows. To be a Christian, a born-again Christian, is to never be alone. He doesn't walk before us because we might not follow. Doesn't walk behind us. He asks us to walk with him. In a daily journey, we're not he's going to be glorified, but we're going to be glorified. When I do a good deed, wow, I'm hot stuff, aren't I? It's like me taking a shovel and throwing it out. Here's my good deeds for the day. And then the Lord takes it and he shoves it back with a backhoe. This is what I have for you. I got the butter to cover the bread. I want you to taste. I have to ask myself every night, did I do the things that God wanted me to do today? There's always something I missed. Always. But he didn't stop loving me. Today, I'm very grateful. First of all, I'm up here. But before that, I woke up today. And I asked the Lord today to help me. And he did. I had a whole routine of what I was going to talk about and I was going to dazzle you with words. <laughs> and I finally realized if I allowed the Holy Spirit He would dazzle you with words. I hope so. I hope that uh, you if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you would. That right now, you would ask him to come into your heart. That right now, you would realize that you're a sinner. That right now, you would realize no matter how great the things you do are, ain't going to get you into heaven. But more, I would hope that you would realize how much he loved you. He loves you and I. That's, that's the song. Oh, how he loves you and I. And how blessed we are to be given an opportunity. There are people who say, I have to die for my God. And Jesus died for me. Wow. Big difference, big separation. People said to me, what religion are you? I said, I don't have one. Got a relationship. Wow. Not one I chose, but one he chose for me. So I pray today that... the words I spoke touched your heart. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, please do that. And if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, 
Did you allow him to wash your feet today? Did you allow him to bless you today? What a blessing. All I got. I want to thank you again, Pastor, for giving me the opportunity. And I want to thank my Bridget for singing the song she sang and the music she put together for me. I just love her. I love the tea. I love all, everybody here in... <laughs> God said, I give you a new commandment to love everyone. Wow. Thank you. God bless you. Would you stand with me?